Hey, I'll tell you what, we are in the studio today and uh, with our good friend Gwen, the canning wizard, better known as the bird lady. And uh, Gwen, today we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually canning some salmon. And you know, I got to tell you guys and gals about salmon. I do not like to freeze salmon myself. Um, I like to eat it fresh, um, but I love it canned. And I am not a very good canner at this point, but after this video, I'm hoping that I become an excellent canner. And this is what I prefer to do with most of my salmon is to, again, to can it because I do like to eat it fresh, but there's something about a lot of times, even if you're vacuum sealing it, I just don't think it stays well in the freezer. So canning it to me, personal opinion, is the most viable thing to do with it. Hey Gwen, how's it going today? It's going great. Good to see you. Hey, I'll tell you, um, I've got a few fillets of salmon here and I'm really interested in learning how to can this on my own. So again, because I typically only get out on Lake uh, Michigan, we fish a little bit of Superior. I only get out maybe about six, seven times a year, but you get a lot of fish and you're overwhelmed with all these fish. And again, you can't eat it all fresh. So canning it to me, this seems like the way to go. Well, um, one thing you can do with it, and it's awesome this way, is you smoke it mm -hmm. oh. and then can it. And then can it. That's a great idea. I do love it smoke. Um, what I'm doing is I'm uh, cutting the, the salmon fillets into like one inch thick strips. Um, with salmon, you can leave the skin on. Uh, some people don't like the skin. I don't like the skin. You don't have to eat the skin. Right, okay. But, but you like does, to can it with the skin. Okay. I like to can it with the skin because it has an oil in it that's going to keep your, your fish fresher. Okay, that's interesting. So, what kind of salmon is this? Uh, this salmon actually is uh, lake trout, and it's actually ah. out of uh, Lake Superior, so it doesn't get any better than that. Ah, okay. But again, I don't like to freeze things. Uh, I just it don't, makes I don't, it mushy. It does. makes it mushy. I just don't like it. But canning it is absolutely delicious. But so, how big are these jars? That these we have? are half pints. Half pints. Now, these work great for fish. the The biggest you would want for any kind of meat is the pints. Okay. This is a pint. This is a half pint. Now, because we're using half pints, we can double stack these jars. Oh, that's nice. In the canner. Okay. Uh, you cannot double stack these, but you can double stack these. Okay. Okay. And we're going to put um, a separator in when we do that so that there's a space not... between the two of them. They're not sitting oh, directly on top of each Oh, I see how that goes. Okay. You know, one thing, too, about these half pints that I like, uh, too, is that it's so convenient to either stick them in your pocket when you're going out fishing or going out hunting, have the other pocket full of crackers, and that's really a good, some people might call it, you know, a snack, but that's really a good little meal. You know, oh, yeah, it's just the yeah. convenience of it, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. Um, now, with fish, uh, salmon and trout is one of the few that, um, i get rid of this fin. Um, one of the few that you can eat the bones. So um, you don't have to be so picky about picky that. about things. In fact, uh, salmon bones are really good source of calcium. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Um, I know people that if they even feel a bone, they won't eat, eat the rest of the meat. Yeah, but the thing is with salmon and um, like pickled northern, the bones go soft. Yep. And they're they're really easy to, to so you really don't up. even no you really don't even know they're there but with salmon the, the amount of calcium that's actually in the bone is amazing that's interesting I didn't know that so all right so let's uh okay you can help with this process too okay, uh, what gonna we're gonna do yeah turn it down, down a little bit so it's yep. simmering okay um, okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take okay that's on the outside <laughs> um. We're going to take skin out. Skin out. Okay. And put it in the jar. That's and we're gonna we're gonna put uh, quite a few of these in there. That's interesting. And so skin out. Why skin out, Gwen? It just it keeps it from sticking to the jar. Okay. Because there's natural oils in the skin. That's another reason to leave it on while you're doing this. And you're packing them pretty tight. Yes. Now again, um, 
in our last segment, I said the headspace is real important. Right. So you want to make sure it is below this rim here. Okay. And just kind of pack it in there. Right. Now, if you want any kind of seasoning. I love flavor. Okay. So, so what we sometimes. have here is we have some onion. Okay. We have uh, different kinds of peppers. We have jalapeno. We have cayenne and little um, ornamental peppers. We also have pear, green pepper, and... You would actually add that to fish, pear? Yes. That's interesting. I'm all about fla Apple. different flavors. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is uh, we've got different sauces over here. Got a we've great got new marinade, too. Some people sent us. Check that out, everybody. Yeah, we're going to try that. It looks like it's a oriental blend. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be more like a, um, like you would use a marinade. I bet you that would be awesome on tuna. Ooh. Because you marinate your tuna before you, you uh, sear it. Okay. All right, Gwen, so we've got all the jars stuffed good with all of our salmon. So the next process is? Um, the next process is we're going to add whatever flavors you want. Let's mix it up um, big time. Because this is red, it's a jalapeno, but it's red, so it's going to make some really pretty toppings. Yeah, it looks good. A lot of people don't know that uh, green pepper will turn red. When it ripens. Yes. Seen that. So, same with jalapenos. They'll turn red. So, we're going to put a couple of jalapeno slices in there. Ooh, that one's for me. And then we're going to put some onion on the top. A little bit of onion. And a little bit of salt. How much salt? Uh, for this size, probably a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay. Just a little bit. Don't need much. And then we'll set that one to the side. Now the next one, let's see what we're going to mix it up with. Let's go with a little bit of apple. Now that interests me because I'm a huge apple person. I love apples. Let's go with a little bit of apple here. Will you take the skin off? You don't have to take the skin off an apple. Nope. You don't have to. Um... And the slices are going to be small enough. I'm just going to take the core out in any bad spots. You know, you get whatever. We're not going to put a whole lot in here. Remember, it's just for flavor. Yep. So, put that on the top of there. And we're going to add a little bit of heat. Cool. So you got Apple sweet heat. and heat. And again, a little bit of salt. Yep. Okay. So... That one's apple and heat. I love experimenting with foods, you know, by adding different things to them to see what the flavor really turns out to. All right, that's starting to count down. That was the beep, and it's, okay. uh, it's up to pressure, and now the canner is going to So we're even magic. going with a little pear. Yes. Pear is, this pear is amazing. Um, I think I was hoping that you were going to do that. <laughs> Oh, that's a good pair. I mean, they oh. these are Bosque. Yep. Bosque. Yes. Mm. Um, mm. they're they're um, a little firmer, like an apple. Yeah. And they're. Oh, that's a good pair. And I I'm going to order about ten of them trees. Bosque. Huh? I think uh, we're going to put a little bit of maple syrup on. There. Oh, now we're really talking. Just a little bit. You don't, we don't need a lot. Need a whole lot. We're just gonna add. You know, I tell you, when I cook salmon in the oven, wanna, I love to add maple syrup. Yeah, you don't want to add too much sweet to it. You just want a little bit of sweet. Okay. Don't overdo it. Okay. Um, and then again, the salt. Again, it's a little bit of salt. In fact, I can put the salt on these right away, so I don't. So you're salting all of them. Yeah. Yeah. This is just, this is uh, pink Himalayan salt. No, what's the difference salt? between, oh, sea salt. Okay, yeah. Sea salt, it's pink Himalayan, which means it's got the best minerals and stuff in it. It's actually better for you okay. than a lot of other salts. Okay, now we've got the sauce. The marinade. 
I know it tastes awesome on venison, I can tell you that. I can smell the molasses in it. Okay. So we're gonna be Oh, now I'm all over that one. You can, yeah, I can do even one. do two of them. Well, we're going to mix one up here a little okay. bit. Because the one, we're going to add an extra kick to it. Okay. I, I, this has got a kick? Yep. I like a little kick. Okay. It's got a little kick. Oh, it's going to have a lot of kick. So... And I think if you put the, the the pepper to the side, you can see the ones that got the pepper in them. Yeah. But um, the pear, we've got just, the, this is with the apple, this is with the pear. There's no kick in that one. Right. That's just the, the sauce. And then we've got these two other ones here. Let's see what we can do with them. Oh. Let's Sugar? Go. This is brown sugar. Oh, brown sugar. Dark brown sugar. Woo. Again, not much. Yep, don't overdo it. You can always add more. You can't take it out. And I'm going to put a little bit of maple syrup in there. Oh, that sounds really good. And there's nothing better than Wisconsin maple syrup. No argument there, folks. And this one. Do you want heat? We got quite a bit of heat. Okay. Yep. That one's just maple brown sugar. One more. This one here. Hmm. You like oranges? Oh, I love oranges. Okay, we got some orange marmalade. Ooh. This stuff. We're going to give it a good go. Ooh. Because that'll melt into yeah, it. Yeah, wow. That'll melt into it. So we're not going to worry about the headspace there to, so much because that will melt it'll, into it'll it. It'll work its way down. Now, if you want, we could throw a slice of pear on the Just top. Just so she looks too. good, right? Oh, yeah. Kind of, you know, a little bit. That's there. mixing it up right there. So you'll have to go back through your tape and see what the flavors are. Right. <laughs> No, you typically write on the lids what they I are. I do after after they're done. Okay. Uh, we can, um, if you want to, before we pop them in there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think know. you can kind of figure out what's in them just yeah. by looking at them, right? Yeah. So it's not like we got a hundred jars right. sitting there. We're gonna got quite a bit of salmon in this one. Maybe a little bit too much. You don't have to worry so much about getting the air out when you have it like that as much. No. Because no. there's not a they, lot of no, space No, there's there. not a lot of space. I mean, we we pack those uh, fillets in pretty tight against yep. the, the side. So we're good there. And again, you're wiping them down with white vinegar. White vinegar. vinegar. It and takes, the reason is? It takes the oil from the fish off the edge of the rims. Okay. It cleans any spills that we might have put on there. That with could, the sauces and with other things. With the sauces things. or other things that might spoil the... So just a regular, uh, just a bunch of regular, or just a little bit of white vinegar, yep. right? You can get that anywhere. Yeah. We've got the sauce on the edge. Yeah, See spilled that? over. Yep. So that will definitely... You'll have a problem with the can. Oh, that would not seal. Okay. That would not seal. See that? So that would not have sealed. So you got to make sure that that is off. And that's Keeping them... Them jars clean is very important. Exactly. Obviously. Especially if exactly. you're on the now when, it's get when you're when you, these jars were already sterilized, um, they were washed in hot soapy water and then sterilized uh, prior to this. They're they're cool because we're we're putting cold into this. Yeah. I don't remember if I did that lid or not, but because that's got sauce. So on I gotta it. ask you this. I am not a big dishwasher fan. Um, but is it better to, you know, obviously wash them in the dishwasher? You or, can wash them in the dishwasher. Or by hand. Does it really matter? Does it um, make a difference? When I'm washing them by, I wash mine by hand because mm -hmm. then I can check for cracks, chips, or whatever. Right. Because if there's a crack or a chip, and that's another reason why I run my finger around the lit, the rim. Um, to make to, sure. To make sure there's nothing there that's uh, a flaw in the jar. Um, I have had jars break in the canner. Okay. 
and it's a very sickening sound to hear that crack. To hear that crack. Yeah. And know that um, out uh, a lot of your time was just wasted on something. And you and have it's a all, mess. It's also messy, yeah. Because right. when you take the stuff out of the canner, and it's usually a jar of tomato sauce something that, that goes all over the yeah. place. Figures. Um, the rest of the stuff in the canner will be fine, but they'll be covered with tomato sauce or whatever it was. Okay. I've got these over here warming up. And I just pat the top a little bit. And the, yeah, we can slide that over here. Well, I'll just. Again, finger get tight. A, get a little closer. Oh. oh, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Backing you, that lid off a little bit, huh? Yep. I bat, I put it Not on. Not the there. lid, but the yeah. ring. Well, I can feel the, the, if you do this, here. Try it. You can feel the, the seal seating in. Oh, yeah. And now you, you back it off yeah. a little bit. Now yeah. you do it again. Just finger tight. Yeah. Where you're pushing that Yeah, down. you can feel the seal. That rubber yeah. seal. Yep. And you wait for that and go with it. So. Now you can... If you got a good crew, you can uh, set up an assembly line, and one person's responsible for this part, and the next one, you know, one person fills, uh, puts the first ingredient in the jar, you know, just right. do an assembly That's line. That's kind of like the cool part about canning again. You know, it can definitely be a family. Absolutely. Get together and a family function that everybody's, you got a bunch of salmon, you know what, and uh, it's time to can them up, and everybody gets uh, to help do it. They learn the process from people that are really good at learn doing it. And uh, the other part is then you get to reap the reward at the end, right? Absolutely. Get to eat the eat eat the food. Um, my kids will uh, split. You know, they've got their certain favorites. Yeah. Um, where they will. This one's a little full. This one might leak out this one you might have to eat right away okay huh just kind of giving you a heads up yep we'll be interested to see if that one doesn't seal all right now we're gonna fill the canner up i put um eight cups of water in the bottom of the canner okay uh it's required be for the steam obviously and then i'm gonna put the jars in here and if you could see the the first layer is like that. Oh, okay. And now we can stack it, but we're going to use this little handy dandy thing right. to separate them. Actually, I'm going to flip it over because I want a little bit more space. And then I'm going to put the other jars on top of that. Now, I've got room for three more jars in there. What do you want to put in the other three jars? You know what? Let's, I have a little bit of venison. Uh, you know what I do? I have actually some elk meat that I would love to, to put in there. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we got a little bit of elk meat and we have some room in the canner because uh, that's all the fish that we had. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cut this up and uh, just wanna make sure that canner's full, huh, Gwen? Yes, um, it's better full than empty. Um, if I run out of uh, an ingredient while I'm canning, mm -hmm. Call me silly, mm -hmm. but I will take <laughs> I will take and um, fill jars with water. Throw a seal on them. That's interesting. Because you never know when you're going to need sterile water mm -hmm. for something. I'm going to leave this in strips. Okay. Because I like the the looks of it. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm going to. That really looks good. I'm going to leave this in strips. There's a little piece of. Yuck. And this doesn't have the fat on it that the, the deer had, so this is bad. Yeah, it's pretty lean. Yeah. Again, you could smoke this. That would be good. Put it in the jars. A little bit of um, the jerky seasoning. Mm hmm. Perfect. Ooh. Uh, uh, venison takes seasoning extremely well. Why is that? 
I think it's because it doesn't have the fat, fat content that our beef and stuff does. Mm -hmm. um, very lean. It's very lean, but you only need half or a quarter to one half of the seasoning on venison that you do on beef. Okay. Uh, or any other kind of meat. It just. So we'll stack that you, in there. You just got to be really careful what you do. So yeah, have, have at. Yep. We need three. I said. Three. Yep. Okay. Just kind of pack it in there. Okay, now what kind of seasoning would you like on these, or would you like them just plain that you can add something to later? You know what? Later? Let's just, we're going to do the, uh, definitely the marinade on all of them. Okay. And we'll be kind of, we're not going to go overzealous on the marinade. Because again, venison takes, you can always add more. All right. No salt or anything? No, this has, got, this has got plenty of salt in it. Okay. This one's got plenty of salt in it. Oh, and I smell the molasses. That smells mm. amazing. Um, okay, three lids right here. I gotta get another. I go through half a roll of paper towel when I'm canning. You do, huh? Oh yeah. Because you're constantly wiping things off. Well, and yeah, it's kind of like the number one, they're lint free. And number two, you just toss them because it, I used to use just a, a lint free wash rag. But then if somebody picked it up and washed dishes with it. You don't know. Right. Yeah, I don't know. So this I know one use and I'm done. And if there's anything on there like this. Okay. It just disappears. Now, if you want, we can add some onion or something like that. To I this. would add something to it just to give it. You want a some look. onion? Yeah. Okay. We have it sitting there. We got anyways. plenty of onion. We got apple. We got pear. But I think the onion. Pear. Well, I got another oh, yeah. half there. Because <laughs> I'm not on that side. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, what? is good too, um, like with the venison stew. Um, if you like winter squash, like mm -hmm. butternut or anything. Love you can, squash. You can take chunks of that and put that in instead of potato. Um, you can put sweet potato in it, um, that type of thing. You have to peel it, mm -hmm. obviously, but you want chunks of it. Okay. And it gives it a flavor that's unbelievable. Obviously, this this pan here I've had for years. It just works perfectly for doing the lids. Right. Um, so it's a little beat up, but it still works. All the matters. Works. Yep. Okay, this one we've got to plug in someplace, but okay. Um, you close it to. Um, you slide the, the lid that way to lock it. Okay. Now, because this has got salmon in it, we have to pressure can this for 110 minutes. Now, why is that? What's the difference? Fish, think, definitely more time. Yeah, fish, definitely more time. Okay. I think it has to do with the environment or something. Makes It would make a lot of sense. And all fish is 110 minutes. 110 minutes on fish, so remember that. Um, so... This, uh, we're going to move to a different surface and okay. plug it in and get her going. Hey, Gwen, I'll tell you what. We've got uh, one canner already going with some other things that we've been working on, but the fish are in here, yep. and we got a little bit of elk meat in here to finish off the pressure cooker and uh, the pressure canner, and we're ready to go. So let's show everybody how we set it up. I'll okay. Uh, because we have fish in here, uh, we need to do um, time it for 110 minutes. Is that the max? No. It's not? No. Wow. No, but this, um, with fish, I know it's 110 minutes. Okay. Um, if it was just the elk in there, we could go with 75 right. because it's the pint jars. So if it's not going to hurt the elk, we, though, is no, it? No, no. Okay. If we had the quart jars in here of the elk, it would be 80 minutes. Okay. 75 for the pints, 80 for the quarts. Okay. But we don't do quarts of any kind of meat because... Um, they won't, these are thin enough that the whole product gets heated. Yeah, properly, evenly, huh? Evenly. Yes. The quarts are too big for it to heat 
evenly. Okay, so remember that, everybody. Um, now we're gonna, uh, again, this one is turn on the heat. We're gonna go for 110 minutes. And 110? Start. Start, okay. Now this is going to do the countdown again. Is that like a preheat? It preheats everything. Okay. It gets the, the water that I added to the canner. I added eight cups of water to the canner. It brings that to boiling. Okay. And then the steam starts to fill. The steam will start venting out of here. And then it'll do the countdown for the 10 minutes. Once okay. the steam starts, the countdown for 10 minutes will start. At the 10 minute mark, it'll beep. We flip this to pressure. Remember or that. Type, and just let it be. Let it go. And Gotta it'll love that. Do its own thing. Now, if you want, we can try some salmon that I canned last night. I would love to try it. So, uh, but. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that only has a little bit of sea salt on it. Mm. That is so good. I'll tell you, it's all about doing different things in life and learning. And what a great way when you're going out salmon fishing to really take a bunch of these fish and can them up. And you can pretty much add whatever flavors that fit your fancy. But what a great way to do it. Hey, Gwen, thank you for coming into the thank studio. Thank you for inviting me. And helping us out on this canning. Hey, everybody, make sure you guys please subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. We really appreciate that big time. I hope you guys learned a lot. I certainly did. And no doubt, just remember this, the most important thing in life, it is a great day to be alive. <laughs>